Welcome back, everybody. My name is Tim. This is another Real Ideal Gear Review. And today we're looking at an ocean diver from Welly Merck. This is a company that reached out to me and said they would provide me a watch. They're not asking for it back. This is my first promotional video for a watch manufacturer. And I got to tell you, I was ready to really let them have it because I figured that the price point at less than $100, there's got to be something up with this watch. And you know what? I actually think it's a pretty good watch a lot better than I thought, maybe even a lot better than I'm talking about right now. So let's get into the five things we typically talk about, which are size, fitment, finish, accuracy, legibility, and loom, and then some concluding thoughts at the end. But I got to tell you, this watch, the more I look at it, the more it's like, this might be along the lines of a steel dive from AliExpress or a San Martin from AliExpress. This might be a sleeper as far as the overall quality. It's not perfect. It's got some issues, but at less than $100, maybe it's worth it for the value portion of it. So let's take a look at size. At 40 millimeters across the case and 13.2 millimeters high off the wrist, this watch has kind of that typical dive watch feel. The proportions aren't unusual. It's a little chunky, but you know what? That's a dive watch, especially with 200 meters of water resistance. What do you expect? It has a 20, mil 20 millimeter bracelet, so strap changes are going to be a breeze. When looking at the fitment of this watch, I'm not a huge fan of butterfly clasps. I just don't like the adjusting on it. it to me, it's just the, there are two big a jumps between one half link to another half link. You either have it too tight or too loose, and if you're lucky, you might get in between. But that's only if you remain in that kind of, yeah, I don't know, environment as far as physical physical activity, that kind of thing. Because as you get more physically active, your your wrists start to swell a little bit, or if the heat in increases, their wrists start to swell a little bit, and vice versa. So, to me, the butterfly clasp just isn't one of my favorites. The other thing about the butterfly clasp, I'm not so sure it really goes with a dive watch like this. I know there's other luxury brands that do that, but luxury brands generally are not for that everyday use. And you're gonna find out that I put this watch through not only the everyday use, I actually put it through the gauntlet. I was splitting firewood with this watch. It's the first automatic movement watch that I've put that through just to see if this Miyota movement can handle it. And when I did that, the butterfly clasp actually opened once. Now, I was surprised it only opened once. I actually thought it was going to open up a bunch of times with the impact that I was putting on it. I was using a splitting maul, a solid steel splitting maul, and, and uh, it turned out it, it really holds together pretty well. So I'm impressed with the, the durability of the butterfly clasp. I just am not a real fan of just the adjustability of the butterfly clasp. Now, one other thing I want to mention is the male end link. Not a fan of it. As a matter of fact, it makes the lug to lug from the, across the wrist even longer. So those of you with a small wrist, I think you're actually gonna have a, a harder time wearing this watch because not only is it a 40 millimeter case, it's gonna wear larger than that because of the male end link. The size of the crown, I love it. Great size, easy to grab for my fingers anyway. Uh, the texture is good. The overall size is great. No issues with the crown. Everything adjusted perfectly fine. It, it's a screw down crown, so you're gonna get that with a dive watch with 200 meters of water resistance. So now the finish of this watch is where everything I think really shines. There's a few things I'm not a fan of. At the same time, keep in mind, this is less than $100. It has a Miyota movement. It has brushed finish. It has polished finish. This thing actually hits well above its price point. So as far as the finishing goes, let's start with the bracelet. I love the bracelet because of the polished H links that are on here and the brushed finish in between. So when you look at this watch and you look at the H link on here, you're going to see, I think, some really good finishing and frankly, some good flash. So if you're looking for something with a little more flash, a little bit more, I don't know, dressy look, it appeals to a wider circumstances of wearing this watch. I think this, this bracelet does a great job. I think there's enough polish on the edges of the H link and there's a large section of, of brushed finish in the middle where it really just gives a, gives a little bit more flash overall. Now, if we look at the case, you have the brush finish on the case, you have the polished chamfered edges, great. Um, I don't mind that at all. As a matter of fact, I think that's the combination you're going to go with. If you have the polish on the H links, you probably should have some polish on the case, which they do. It kind of finishes the whole look. You have that polished look that comes off the case right down to the H link bracelet. I love that, that continuity of polish. Um, some watches, I saw a guy on Watch Crunch that was uh, looking at putting a watch together. He was, he was doing a micro brand. And he was asking for some input and I was like, do this, do this polish H-Link uh, bracelet combination. I think it's outstanding. Now we start looking on the inside of the watch. Let's look at the bezel. The bezel is good. It actually reminds me quite a bit of the Invicta, the overall sound. And then there's the grippiness of the edge of the bezel, which also reminds me of an Invicta. It's too polished, it's too slippery. You do get a great sound but you really have to squeeze on the bezel to get a good purchase, to get some good friction on there to turn the bezel. It's a unidirectional bezel. It sounds great. 
it doesn't line up either. A little Seiko-esque if you ask me. If they could have gotten this thing to line up, I could say this is a better value than the Seiko almost from the get-go, but it doesn't line up quite right. The other thing too is there's a little bit of back play with the bezel. So again, the bezel could use a little bit more attention as far as the manufacturing or the quality control, maybe even engineering as far as what goes into it. It reminds me a lot of an Invicta bezel. I'm not really that impressed. Now we go and look on the inside of this. The dial is outstanding. I love the textured surface of the dial. It reminds me of a sandpaper, but it's also a fume dial. So it's lighter green in the center, darker green on the edges, which really helps with the overall legibility and the contrast of the, the hour markers and the handset and the dial itself. Very, very easy to read. I love the dial setup. Now, if you'll notice, you have orange markers on the five minute or five second intervals that adds just a little splash of color every five seconds or every five minutes, which I also like. And that same orange is on the tip of the second hand. You gotta love that. I think the, the second hand really pops with just that little piece of color on the very end of the second hand. Not a lot of text on this dial, just reserved for a logo at the top with the company name, Welly Merck. Down below at the six o'clock position, you're gonna see you have automatic with the 200 meters of water resistance, which by the way, I couldn't read the 200 meter water resistance in orange. I had to get a magnifying lens out to even read it. So a little too small, but at the same time, it's so small, it takes up so, so little space, it, it doesn't really crowd the dial at all either. Now, if we look at the indices, these are great polished baton indices, and they're also recessed into the minute track, which I think is great. So there's just these little touches here and there. So on the design of this dial and the inner parts of the inside the bezel, actually, they do a great job. I really, really like the look of this watch. It's a fantastic looking watch. The downside is the handset. The hour hand and the minute hand, they're just too thin. I, Part of me thinks this is supposed to be kind of a dressier style dive watch because of the butterfly clasp. You've also got these really thin kind of delicate hour hand and minute hand. I just don't think it works with a dive watch, especially at the thinness that those hour hand and minute hands are at. If they could have beefed those up a little bit, I think it'd been better. Not a fan of the handset other than the second hand is outstanding. The date window, great. I can read the date actually without my reading glasses. So this is one of the few watches where the contrast is right. It matches up with the hour markers. I think it fits in really well with this watch. Now, what about the accuracy of this watch? This is a Miyota movement. I think it's the 800 series or 8000 series. I don't remember exactly which one it is, but it's the cheaper version. You can kind of feel the rotor spin around a little bit on the back as well, but it keeps great time. Now I have video of me out splitting wood with this watch. I wanted to put this one through the gauntlet because frankly, I don't get a lot of options when it comes to automatic movements because the price is up there. With the price of this watch, I was willing to try this and see if splitting wood would actually affect the accuracy of this watch. And it didn't at all. As a matter of fact, it improved a little bit. Now, what about legibility and loom? Legibility is fantastic. The hour hand and minute hand could be a little bit better if they were a little bit wider. I really like the legibility of this watch. I actually love the look of the dial, the bezel. The design overall is fantastic. So what's the loom like on this watch? It's okay. It's not the best. It'll last for a little while into the night, but it's not going to last all night for sure. It might last an hour at the most as far as readability goes. If you're okay with that, this watch might be for you. If you're not okay with it like me, I'm not a real fan of that. I like to use my watch at night anyway, low light conditions, no light conditions. I wake up, you know, two or three in the morning or five in the morning. I just want to know what time it is. This watch is not going to do that for the overnight type conditions, but it does have loom and it's okay, barely. What are the conclusions of this watch? Well, first of all, the things I really like, it keeps good time. Remember this thing, I put it through the gauntlet. I was splitting firewood with this. This watch can handle the impact that I put forward on it. The minute track, I love the minute track. I love the orange accents on the minute track. I love the, the second hand and the orange accent on the second hand. The polish and brush finishing on this watch is great. The coordination between the case, the H-Link bracelet is outstanding. The texture on the dial, the fume coloring on the dial where it's lighter in the middle and darker on the outside edges is also awesome. The date window is easy to read. I like the positioning. I love the colors. I love how it matches up with the baton at the three o'clock position. And then of course, one more time, the movement. I love the Miyota movement. Now, what are the things I'm not a huge fan of? Well, one of the things that I'm not really gonna ding this on is the butterfly class. That's just the way they designed it. I just don't understand why they did this with a dive watch that's under $100, unless you're really trying to look like it's that luxury style watch at under $100, but they did it anyway. I'm not a huge fan of butterfly clasps. Now, the things that actually ding this watch on, the loom just isn't good enough. It should be better loom. If the loom was better and there was more attention on the bezel, this thing would be killing any entry-level Seiko dive watch that's out there. 
but not quite. The hour hand and minute hands are just too thin for me. And then of course there is that male end link that really just doesn't, doesn't add to the wearability for people with smaller wrists. The overall score for this is a 9.5. Is it a recommend? Yes, it is just a recommend. It's not a highly recommend. It's, it's just right in the middle. I think it's a good buy. I think it's a great value at less than $100. I would, I would definitely go after this watch if I liked all of the other pieces to this and I could handle the butterfly clasp and everything else. This is actually a really good buy. So let me know what you think of this watch. Put your comments down below. I'm curious to see what you think of Welly Merck. Is there anybody else out there that has had a Welly Merck before or a variant thereof? I'm sure this is kind of like Wonder Bread. It's the same bread. They just put a different packaging over the top of it. So I'm curious to see if anybody else out there has a watch like this or from this company as well. And what your experience is with that watch. I think it's actually surprisingly a good value. So that's my conclusion. Yeah, I think it's a good value. It's a recommend. I want to hear more from you on that. Check out my webpage, realidealgear.com, for any used or reviewed watches that are for sale. I also have some flashlights, knives, things like that, combination sets. Check that out, realidealgear.com. So there you go. My name is Tim. This has been another Real Ideal Gear Review, and we'll catch you guys next time.